town with the great football team. We cheer the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hey guys, welcome to Pittsburgh. My name is Anthony. I appreciate you joining me for another one of these sports card investing videos. Guys, I have some big news today. I want to talk about my man, Colin Sexton from my Cleveland Cavaliers. Super pumped up about the Cavs this season, guys. They're looking great. These young players we got are starting to come together. Uh, Sexton and Garland are clicking. Andre Drummond's looking like a grown man under that basket. And all is well in the land right now, guys. But I want to talk about my man Colin Sexton because he's making me some money. Now, being that I'm a Cavs fan, he was a guy that I PC'd pretty heavy when he was drafted. And I got his PSA Gem Mint 10 on the low low, guys. And with him blowing up this season, I just sold it on eBay for $300. And, guys, that's huge. That is a huge jump. For Colin Sexton like his stuff is pretty much tripled since last season so that is a fantastic fantastic jump for Sexton and because of that I I don't think this is the end for him because he's actually going into a contract year next year so he's either going to be able to re-sign with the Cavs this next offseason or he's gonna probably move on somewhere and get a big contract because dude's a baller man he gets buckets so uh, I think even going into next season, Sexton's value is going to be a little bit higher even than it is right now. So being that I was able to sell the PSA 10 at $300, which right now I think is going to be his max value because unless Cleveland's able to sustain the way they've been playing, they're not going to go deep into the playoffs. So with that being said, his values at the end of the season is not going to be as hot because just like we saw with players and teams exiting the bubble, their card prices started to go down once they stopped playing. So I predict that's going to kind of be the, the case with Sexton. Uh, meanwhile, I have a stack of stuff to send in raw to grade of his that I've just picked up from my PC and stuff like that. I grabbed a stack of all the sickest parallels and uh, stuff like that, the top sets that I'm going to be sending into PSA because I want to get those back for the beginning of next season. But I also, just to hedge my bets a little bit, uh, being that I got 300 for the base PSA 10, I went out and I spent a third of that on a GMA 10 red, white, and blue Sexton. So the pop's going to be a little bit lower on that. And the entire idea behind getting the GMA is it's going to be a crack and resub over to PSA. Now, whenever I look at anything as far as, you know, cracks and resubs, what I want to do is I basically want to look at that card in a PSA 10 form. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on eBay. I'm going to look up Gem Mint 10, Colin Sexton, red, white, and blue. And I'm going to just take a picture of that, put it on my desktop, and then I'm going to start looking at some of the lower end grading companies like GMA, because in my opinion, GMA is the best of like the lower tier ones. And I think they have some credibility, guys. I've sent stuff to them and they're not just giving tens to everything. They're giving legitimate grades and they actually do share their grading criteria on their website as well, like what makes... Uh, their card get each grade. So if anyone's interested in that, you can go to gmagrading.com and they have more info there. But I think GMA is a buying opportunity for resubbing. Essentially, I was able to get this Sexton and I paid up a little bit for it because I probably could have gotten two raw ones for the price that I got this one. But this to me was kind of a more sure thing. Now, I have a pretty decent eye when it comes to finding stuff raw on eBay and then sending it in for grading. But again, just to be safe, you know, if you don't have that good eye, you could very easily go and get gem mint 10s at other grading companies that are, are very low like for example i got a lower popped card than the one i sold for a third of the price of what i sold the psa for so essentially should this gma come back a psa 10 i know that i'm going to end up with at least another 300 dollars. so that was kind of my thought process behind pulling the trigger on the gma 
Now, if for some reason the GMA comes in, I get it in hand and it doesn't look in person like a PSA 10. No sweat off my back. Colin Sexton's super hot right now. Just throw it back on eBay for more than I paid for it. And that's my plan, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get that sucker in. I'm going to crack that slab. I'm going to send it into PSA and hopefully get another PSA 10. This is a great strategy for anybody out there that has cards in a PSA 10. If you've noticed right now, the NBA sports card market is so much like the stock market. If a player goes bonkers, their cards go nuts immediately. Like during that game, they go nuts. So with that being said, what I've been really trying to do lately is the gem mint tens i have of guys like uh, obviously not like your luka Doncic's or your lebron james or your like your generational talents you want to hold on to those because those are cards that are going to always go up barring some kind of you know freak career ending injury but like guys like colin sexton who when it's all said and done like i love them like i'm probably one of the biggest colin sexton fans on planet earth I don't see him being a Hall of Fame player. I hope he is. Like, I hope to God he is because that means awesome things for my Cavaliers. But I don't see him being one of the best, you know, one and two guards to ever play the game of basketball. And essentially what that means is, like, growing up, I think of all of the players that were on tier with, like, a Colin Sexton is right now, and their rookie cards are worthless now. I'm not saying his rookie card is going to eventually be worthless, but what I'm saying is it's not going to have the long-term uh, collectability and the long-term value that a guy like Luka Doncic does or a guy like LeBron James or any of these generational Hall of Fame caliber players. And I know I just threw Luka Doncic out there with LeBron James, but I believe in the kid. I really believe Luka is going to be that cat that kind of take the torch once Bronny retires. Personally, I'm holding on to my Lucas because I definitely think that that is going to be like gold bars in the future. But this is a great way, guys, to think about cashing in some of these cards that you have at their highest value and then replenishing it cheaper. Because essentially, I got paid $200 to upgrade my card. That's the way I'm looking at this, guys. So let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. If you've tried this, let me know. I know SGC is really good for this too. If you can get SGC 10s because they're very, very thorough with their grading. And BGS is actually not too bad. But, you know, with what's going around with the BGS slabs right now, some of them being fake and all that, I would just be a little bit more cautious with the BGS slabs. If you guys haven't seen the video I did on BGS slabs, it explains how to check to see if yours are real. And, you know, when you're shopping on eBay, you can actually use that strategy to verify the, the slabs as well. So, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out because there's some good information there. Any of these companies are great. The thing I like about BGS is it's like encapsulated inside of like a sleeve. So the card's a little bit more protected in there than, you know, in some of the other grading companies. So that's something to think about as well if you're able to find BGS low. But as far as finding another Gem Mint 10 at the lowest possible value, GMA is going to be so much cheaper than even SGC. And SGC is cheaper than both PSA and Beckett. So those are the two I'm kind of sticking to. And personally, I like SGC. I'm an SGC fanboy. I love Tuxedo Slabs. Uh, my personal rookie card from professional wrestling, I actually sent in to get slabbed with SGC just because I like the tuxedo. I really think GMA is a, a huge buying opportunity right now, guys, because one thing I've learned just from kind of studying the market and studying them, I watched a ton of their, you know, reveal videos and stuff like that when people get submissions back. And like I said, I've sent to GMA and I can tell you they are not, you know, some fly by night, just throwing tens out there type of company. So knowing that it makes it a safer bet. If you're worried about not being able to properly identify a gem mint 10, it really hedges your bets a lot being that a professional grading company has classified the card as a gem mint 10. So that's something I did here with Colin Sexton, guys. Let me know what you think about it. Again, like I said, I could have gotten two raw for the price I paid for this one GMA 10. But like I said, it 
basically I got paid $200 to upgrade my card. So that's kind of my strategy there, guys. Appreciate you watching the video, guys. If you haven't, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. It tells YouTube I'm doing something good. And subscribe to the channel, guys. We're on that road to 2K. Once we hit 2,000, we're doing slabs of cash where you have the opportunity to choose between my cold hard cash or my graded cards. So, guys, I'd love for you to be a part of that. Make sure you stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next video. May God bless. Take it easy.